All right, this is JPEG to Raw, show number 73, and uh, recorded on February 19, 2013. And tonight we're joined by someone I've been a fan of since, I think, 2005, 2007, somewhere around that range. I'm trying to figure out when it was. But it was 2005, 2007, around then when I joined iStock Photo. And that's when I learned of our guest tonight. And I've been a fan of hers ever since. Um, her name is Nicole Young. Nicole, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Going fine, other than my voice is about shot. So <laughs> Y'all may hear a little more of Tim tonight than usual. Tim, glad you're here. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Um, Nicole, we're not here to talk about iStock. Uh, I just, that's how I knew about Nicole. Uh, but I do want to ask you, Nicole, about something before we get into the main subject. Because mm -hmm. I heard a rumor about you and something you go around doing. Something called rogue signing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tell go, me tell me what that is. Well, I'll if I find myself at a bookstore, um, I will peruse the photography section because I have um four print books out. I have wait, yeah, because I have like two or three other ebooks, I believe. Uh, so I have four print books of Peach Fit. So I'll go um to the photography section, I'll look to see if any of my books are in stock and I'll I'll sign them. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. Sometimes I'm sneaky about it. Uh, when I first uh, signed books, I asked the clerk at Barnes and Noble, and then I was just like, I'm "Not going to ask anymore. I'm just going to do it." What are they going to say? You know, don't don't do that. And then I'll just show them my picture on the back of the book. But it's you know, just kind of fun. I, think. How, I read that and I said, "That is just incredibly awesome." <laughs> that you know, the person who's getting that book is going, "Oh my God, Nicole signed this." <laughs> that well, the is, question is, will they know that it's really you that signed it? That's, like, I guess, a good, valid point. But <laughs> you know, they may not... Everybody buys a book, like, wait a second, who wrote in this book? <laughs> <laughs> they may not at first, but I bet you at some point in time they come across what I came across and find out that Nicole goes around doing this. <laughs> yes, yes. They and may, I, if they see it and then they see the book, they'll be like, oh, wow, look, this is one of the ones that she signed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's not a ton out there. Just, you know... Sprinklings of them. I mostly threw out Portland <laughs> because I haven't done it very many other places yet. Well, I think that's incredible. That's that's awfully nice. Yeah. And I have the web page pulled up here of, of where your books are, um, so people can look. At, what is there? Six. I have uh, seven. Seven. Yes. Total. One of them. One of them is a just a free book I saw, I have on my uh, on my blog there, and um, the others are either print or. Uh, ebook. They're all ebook, really. You can get every single one of them in ebook ebook form, but um, you know, there's some you can actually get holding your hand. Yeah, I was looking at the the food photography one, which is something you know we're gonna be going over tonight. Um, and I'm thinking, Tim, maybe for the February winner of our photo contest, that we buy the food photography book and give it to mm -hmm. them as a winner. That's a good idea. Yeah, I like that. I think that in honor, <laughs> in honor of the show tonight, we will the show will buy that. And give it to awesome. the winner of the Feb of February contest. Awesome. So if you're not if you're not in the uh, the Facebook group, which is where you have to be to, to enter the contest, go to uh, facebook.com slash groups slash JPEG to Raw and join there and we have a a uh, we call it a photo album or something. Yeah, a photo album where you can go and uh, and enter your photos. This month's this month's item is, or topic is, emotion. And it's got to be photos from the current month. It does have to be photos from the current month. So it, we will put a link to Nicole's, in Nicole's books here so you can go and find them. But her page is pretty easy to find. It's NicoleZblog.com. I'm eventually going to be transitioning over to NicoleZ.com. I haven't... Done Nicole that Z. yet? Because <laughs> okay. I actually got the domain name. It was like a big victory to get that domain name, uh, that URL, and now it's just like the actual process is so complicated to keep all your SEO and all of that. So it is. Yeah, I know. We moved from the Nav Studios when we first started because I didn't know how one set things up, so I didn't want to go mm -hmm. straight to JPEG to RAW. It turned out to be a bigger mistake because moving everything over is such a hard thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so we're slowly moving everything back over to. JPEG to Raw. Uh, did you not own the Colsey.com before? No, I didn't. Someone else owned it. Um, you know, I mean, when I when I started out as Nicolzi, uh, it was you know it was my username on iStock. Yeah. And 
it's just kind of slowly transitioned into becoming my brand. And I was like, when I when I created my um, my business, my corporation, S corporation, you know, for tax purposes and whatever, I was Nicole, I'm Nicole's Incorporated, and I'm like. I really want Nicolzy.com and someone else owned it and it, she really didn't do anything with it and I finally was able to get a, a dialogue with her on email and I bought it from her. <laughs> so yeah. it's a happy story and that, but I'm not really using it yet. So she had it before you even had anything to do with it? Oh yeah. Not like she squatted on it? No, she wasn't squatting it. Uh, Nicole Sai, I believe, is a real common name. I've seen a lot of other people with the same name because there are other, like Pinterest, somebody has Nicolzy on Pinterest and that's like the one thing I don't I don't have yet. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> I think my, by the way, I think my video might be a little choppy. I'm seeing it kind of choppy. I, my audio might be okay, but are you guys seeing that too? Your, your audio is You are a little bit choppy on the video. It okay. Actually, it looks clear, but your mouth is not going with your words. Yeah, I think I just have a computer issue I need to upgrade. <laughs> Sitting on but, an old Mac Pro. Oh, but we understand but, the Macs. Yeah. <laughs> but your audio is fine. Your audio is better than my audio. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, how did you get into food photography? Well, you know, I, stock photography is where I really kind of started growing as a photographer. And food photography, I, I, I love to cook and I love to eat. And I just wanted to learn food photography. So I was like, well, I'll shoot some food for my, um, for my stock portfolio. I, there are a few forum threads where people will request recipes that, you know, people can make. And I think I started out by doing that. And that's still going. But, you know, if you go into the forum and the request content or whatever the name is, you know, there are people who are like, hey, here's a recipe, can you make it? So I can put it in my newsletter. Um, and that's where I started. And then I just kept doing it, kept learning, and a lot of it is just self-taught, you know, learning a few things like how, like backlighting and, and you know, I just kind of developed my own style through the process and I had a lot of fun with it. And then I wrote a book about it and it just kind of exploded around that time as well. And that's, you know, that's really how it happened. So is your food photography book the first book that you wrote? No, my first book, I have actually wrote two books before that. Um, I wrote a book uh, called, the, my first one was the Canon 70 from Snapshot, 7D from Snapshots to Great Shots. And then the second one I wrote was on the 60D, same series, and then food photography. And then I wrote a book recently on, uh, on one software. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I'm seeing that one now, the... the yeah. um, it's on your. I think they're out of order on my on my site. So. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, and we're we're showing some of the photos now as we go through it. And you know, I was doing some research, and I I found, I think there's really just two tips you need to know for food photography. That is, to always come in directly overhead, and to pop <laughs> the flash pop the flash on top of your camera, <laughs> and shoot that way, right? Right. No. <laughs> oh, absolutely. What no. what did I what did I do wrong there? Well, you know, direct light is not ideal. I, I, would just, I shouldn't say you can't have direct light because you can have nice, soft, direct, diffused light, you know, flat on your camera, on your photo, and that still can look good. Um, I prefer to have the light source behind my image, I'm sorry, behind my subject, and that could either be window light or um, like an actual strobe with a soft box. I've done that before, uh, partly because I, I know I like to use strobes, but um, I need to make sure that I know how to use strobes in that situation, in case I'm in, a, in the, an environment where I can't use window light, so I always I always um, recommend that to anyone who wants to get serious about food photography is they know how to shoot both. I actually mostly shoot uh, my stuff with uh, window light just because it's easy, it's available, it's beautiful. I have a really great location to do it, and um, so that's the first tip is to backlight, and then I just use a uh, fill cards like white foam board to kind of just bounce the light back in and sometimes I'll pop a little reflector in, you know, right before I shoot it. Um, second tip, what's another good tip? So uh, I there's like so the, many. I like the, you know, I like the one about, I was joking about the overhead and yeah, the yeah. pop-up flash <laughs> because, you know, um, using the window light and you have an example just came up here a second ago mm -hmm. with uh, using window light in a tube diffuser on, on the side. Uh, that, I imagine, reduces the number of harsh shadows by using a natural light. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. so how much thought goes into uh, prepping the food? You know, actually cooking the food, are you cooking it like you normally would eat it? Or are you doing anything special in the process? Like, for instance, meats or anything, are you cooking them to something where you wouldn't usually cook it to eat, but it looks mm -hmm. better in a photo? 
Uh, yeah, that, that all really just depends on, I mean, I could walk through every photo and tell you the process of, you know, whether it was something I ate, uh, leftovers from something I ate, uh, something I specifically created, you know, just for that shot. I have a cup, I have one steak in there and it has like um, onions on top, I think it's some blue cheese and yeah. asparagus, I believe. That was my dinner. <laughs> and I just happened to have everything set up. I. I wasn't planning on photographing it and I kind of finished and I was getting to the point where I was kind of plating it. I was like, this could be really beautiful. <laughs> so I, I made sure I was deliberate with my plating and then I really only got two solid shots out of it, but that's all I really needed because uh, I didn't want it to get too cold because <laughs> I still wanted to eat it. Are you saying that you fix your food that neatly no, for a regular I, well, meal? Sometimes, but for the most, like I knew I was like right before I was gonna, I was plating it. I realized this is something I should photograph, and so I was a little, like I said, just a little bit more deliberate with the placement of things. Um, for the most part, no, I just slap the food on a plate and okay. eat it. <laughs> if I'm just gonna I eat it. I say this looks really. I'm, I just ate dinner not too long ago, and I'm hungry. <laughs> pictures now. But there yeah. are other. There's another example. I don't do a lot of like. I eat a lot of. I do eat meat, but I don't actually photograph a lot of it. Um, no reason really. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's it's challenging. I would say I have a hamburger photo in there, and if if you were to cut that hamburger in half, it was probably mostly raw on the inside because <laughs> you do you know you do want them to be plump and pretty, and it it all depends on what you're cooking as to whether or not it cooks properly or if it does if you pull it before it's actually done. And that those kind of photos I'm specifically photographing for my stock portfolio. It's all it's all real food, but it's just prepared special for uh, for the camera. And that's why I was wondering if maybe sometimes it was prepared special for the camera. And um, how do you have to during a shoot? Let's say you're going to do a little bit longer than you did for the steak. Are you having to replace any parts of the the meal? I mean, how long do you have with yeah. meat before it's it, too many juices are come out, or it's it's really yeah. the shot's ruined because of the meat? Oh, meat meat's going to die really quickly on a set, especially if you're using any kind of light or um, if it's hot. You know. Uh, you can always touch things up with um, oil or its ju original juices, whatever you have on hand. I'm pretty quick with my photos. I don't, you know, go. It's just me. I'm not photographing for an art director or anything like that. So I'm able to just decide. Okay, I I've got, you know, I'm usually only going tops like five photos. I don't sh only shoot five photos, but I want keepers. You know, I want that many keepers and. Um, you know, I'm getting horizontal, a couple variations of that, a couple variations of vertical, and then uh, maybe, you know, whatever else kind of hits at that moment. And I'm like, oh, I can do this, I can do that. Um, but I would say 10 or 15 minutes and it's done. But I'll usually watch it too and make sure that, you know, it's if it's dead, it's dead. I can't do any more with it. Uh, other things that I, I, I usually have to replace in between are uh, like small herbs. Like if I have a mint leaf or a basil leaf, those often will die very quickly. Yeah. And I think in my book, I actually have a demonstration of, um, I'm not sure what the time frame is, but it, it shows like mint leaves in a little, just like I put them just, I think, in a glass or something. And they're all nice and plump. And then, you know, 15 minutes later, and then 15 minutes later, and 15 minutes later, and they're just completely dead. Uh, you know, so you don't even want to keep those things sitting on your table uh, for too long because you want them to stay fresh. But those are things I usually will look at and I'll be like, well, it started out nice and, you know, perky and now the leaf is kind of doing this so then I'll replace <laughs> the new one. Yeah. <laughs> now, are you using a tripod or are you hand-holding? I do tripod and that's mostly because, well, there's actually two reasons. Um, I do window light and when, with the window light, especially here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, it's pretty cloudy most of the time. The The quality of the light is really good, but I can't handhold because oftentimes I have like half a second exposure or, oh. you know, maybe not that slow, but a really long exposure, way too long. And I'm trying to keep everything at a really low ISO, like ISO 100. So I am on a tripod for that reason. I'm also extremely um, deliberate with everything in the shot, you know, and I, I I'll set something up and I will move things like millimeters and you know it's it's it looks like it's more in the camera because I'm usually very long you know like a longer lens and really compressed but I will just inch things to get them in that perfect spot uh, like every time you see like a glass in the corner I place that there special <laughs> because I like to have things you know like not in weird places on my corners um, 
berries dropping them in certain places. You know, I mean, it's some of it's kind of just like throwing it and hoping it lands in, in a good spot. And sometimes it's manipulating manipulating things to go perfectly. Um, so being on a tripod allows me to move something, you know, whether it's a piece of food or a prop, and and then take that picture and then try moving something differently, but everything else stays the same. And then sometimes I'll go on and look at my shots and I'll be like. I'm really glad that I removed that fork because I didn't like it with the fork, even though I thought I did. So little things like that. So yes, I, I love using a tripod. Oh, and I got, you know, look at your photos. I got to imagine the details like you just mentioned are so critically important mm -hmm. that you, you pay attention to all those details. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite food that you like to photograph? Um, with some things I do enjoy, I, I really like photographing pasta and I haven't done it much because I know I'll overdo it. <laughs> I just do, you know, I have a lot of pasta photos already in my portfolio, but it's got, it has a lot of texture and a lot of, there are so many things you can do with it. You know, you can cook it so many different ways and dress it so many different ways. Uh, so I really like pasta. I think shrimp. Uh, are another thing I absolutely love to photograph because they're so colorful mm -hmm. and I love the colors that they um, they complement like with blues and greens uh, go really well with it so you always end up with a very you, you can I should say end up with a very bright and beautiful photograph which is I'm I'm very my, the colors in my photos I try to keep things very I guess happy and colorful that's just kind of what I I've, I've kind of learned that that's kind of my style <laughs> over time that I I'm very colorful with my images so those, those are two things I think that if I, if I were stuck with those two things, I'd probably be happy. Uh, on those same lines, what about your worst, uh, your least favorite? Um, I tried a grilled cheese sandwich once, and that was <laughs> <laughs> not – It you won't find any grilled cheese sandwich photos in my portfolio. I'll just put it that way. So <laughs> I, I need to try that one again because that that's a challenge. You know, I'm not a – I'm not going to say I'm not a food stylist, but I'm not a trained food stylist. And, you know, I, I just, I am my own uh, art director, photographer, food stylist, food prop, uh, prop stylist. So I do everything. And, and you know, I've, the reason I think actually, one another reason I enjoy food photography is because it's such a challenge for me, especially with things like food styling and um, doing things, like trying to get that cheese to pull perfectly and then land and then not congeal grossly <laughs> before I actually get the photo. That's a really hard thing to do. So uh, I should put that one on my list. <laughs> I need to give like, that another shot. Because you, so, you got to, yeah, the shot has to be to look uh, appetizing. It's got to look exactly like yeah. something you'd want to eat. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> so now you mentioned, are you doing these mainly for eye stock or do you have mm -hmm. any, any other, um, are you doing them just for yeah. yourself or what's your main reason for well, doing them? It's, I mean, it's kind of for myself because I enjoy it, but that's kind of the beauty of, of being uh, a stock photographer with what I do is I get to photograph whatever I want and put it in my portfolio. And, um, but there's also finding that balance of finding things that I think will sell along with what I want to photograph and what I can photograph. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of both. You know, it's, I'll come up, like, I have a few ideas uh, that I have that are going to be purely stock photos. They're not going to be foods I would eat. Uh, or eat now or whatever, you know, it's not something I might not eat while I make it. Um, it's just going to be for stock. Um, but I'm, you know, one day I'd really like to photograph, uh, I'd like to move into photographing cookbooks and, and things like that. It's not, um, and I, I, I don't have clients, I don't work with clients, and it's mostly because I haven't really pushed into that, um, I haven't tried to get clients and I don't have time to even try to find clients. So uh, cookbooks I think it would be a really a fun venture for me. I could stick with the style that I'm doing, um, but I'm not sure where that, you know, yeah. I haven't really busted into that <laughs> yet. Well, your, your iStock uh, collection has done pretty well by itself. I believe, yeah, I have a I have a lot more than just food in my eye stock sure, uh, portfolio. Right. In fact, my food is a smaller percentage. Of, I've only been doing food for a couple of years, so. And we'll put a link in the show notes to to your eye stock uh, collection, so people mm -hmm. can go see that. Um, okay, so what are uh, what about the steam I see in some of these? Are those because one thing I didn't mention is that you are a Photoshop expert. <laughs> I mean, you're not just a person who calls yourself that. You're a certified expert uh -huh. who also works the helpline, helping people mm -hmm. with, with Photoshop. Yeah, so, I work. Uh, I do help desk for NAPP. 
So, which makes me wonder, makes me think you could do anything, any of these things I'm seeing, maybe something you've added. Is, so is the steam something you've added, or is it something that was true in the shot? That's actually, I mean, it's not, it's not actually steam created from the heat of the food you're seeing. It's uh, fabricated, but it's actually in the photograph. It's what I did was, um, and actually, you know, I think I have a blog post about this. My search is broken on my blog right now, so I wouldn't be able to find it very quickly. But uh, it's what I did was I, I set everything up, and I had I use a, a magic arm to connect to to connect a fork with, and I actually have a few different things. I did a shrimp, so I'll talk about the shrimp. So then I put the shrimp on there. I have a speed light behind with a black background, and the speed light is just you know capturing that get to capture that steam really quickly um, and then I have some fill light in the front and so if, if this is the camera and I'm the food uh, what I did was I held um, what are those called a, a closed steamer you know, like a handheld one and I, I held it under it and then I would just poof poof and I would just you know let the steam go up and I take pictures took a ton of pictures to try and get that perfect amount of steam there it is yeah perfect amount of steam and and then I also did some pictures without the steam and then I, in Photoshop, I did actually. It's kind of like the bottom half of the photo is uh, the photo without having that steam underneath it because yeah. there was also steam coming below it. And then the top half is actually this from the actual steamer. Wow. So it's, yeah, it's really, it's two photos combined together. Um, but it's yeah. not, yeah, yes. I mean, it's, I have a couple pepper images that are like, I was kind of doing them just for effect. And it's like, completely like steam crazy because you know it's hot pepper or jalapeno or whatever <laughs> but I think it's a little bit more subtle than the other ones that I have but look, it was fun you know? I, I, I would look at this and never know that this you that that wasn't steam coming from <laughs> the shrimp yeah especially when you look at the tail the very end of the tail it looks like it's coming off the bottom yeah. of the tail not so he's wrapping off. around it yeah right yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a fun that was a fun shoot I love doing stuff like that like playing with light and you know it's like it's like photographing lightning or and fireworks, you don't really know what you're going to get until you look at the camera. What about the asparagus? I think this is asparagus, right? You'll see. Oh, that was, that was actually uh, on a grill. And I was at a friend's house, and we were going to do some grilling. And I was like, well, I'll bring the food and the cedar planks. And, and they're photographers, too, so they totally understood. You know, like, I'm just going to take some pictures. And that was probably the coolest shot that I got out of it. So. Yeah, but there's there's no faking there. That's pure. <laughs> I may have like positioned the asparagus a certain way just so they you know looked pretty, but other than that, it's all real. And we ate them afterwards, and they were really good. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, we lost Mike. There we go. <laughs> uh, uh, no, oops. I re I just realized in a second that I was like, oh darn, he's not there. <laughs> Every once in a while, I have to back out for a second. <laughs> um, no, I love that one with the steam. And I was going to wonder how you faked that one because that one looked, and, you know, I, I shouldn't say faked. I mean, that's, that's a bad word, but uh, it, looks, <laughs> it looks just gorgeous. Well, was the uh, plank of wood on fire in this? Well, it, they're, they're like these cedar planks that will, right. you know, they smoke and you have to spray them with water and they'll catch on fire if you don't spray it. So they probably had caught on fire a little bit. And, and that's the you know, smoke from it. Yeah, so the smoke from it. Well, you can see the edges. It looks like the edges of the, um, of the cedar wood plank burned. Is, is burned a little bit. Yeah, that's why. That's what I got thought of. And somebody out in <laughs> chat, is, Gina Perry out in chat, is asking, do you ever have accidents? Ac like what kind of, oh, like maybe fire she, accidents? Maybe she meant a fire accident. Kind of, I know. I've never had anything like that. I don't, I mean, I, I do all my cooking um, before I shoot. You know, I'm not, not crazy with anything. I, I use a blowtorch, not a blowtorch. <laughs> I'm not crazy, but I use a blowtorch. <laughs> The little, you know, the little creme brulee torches yes. that you can get. So I use that sometimes to kind of crisp things up. Um, that looks good right there. Yeah, was yeah, it, that, was the mean, same that looks there. like that same cedar plank. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that was, you know, of course, position. You know, th th these are the little things. Like, you, I didn't do anything weird to the food. I just arranged the orange slices so they would look pretty. And then <laughs> I figure what I kind of. I kind of compare what I do uh, for my food style, for the most part, what I do for my food styling with how a chef would plate a, 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 you know, a beautiful plate of food to serve at a really nice restaurant. It's, they're deliberate. They want it to look good. It's pretty much the same thing. No, and you, uh, you mentioned earlier adding oil or water, and there's a couple of shots that really show that. Uh, let's go maybe this one. 
This is with water with the blueberries, and I love blueberries. Mm -hmm. um, so with this one, you can you, you must have squirted it with a little bit of blue with a little water. It's possible. I'm not. I don't recall exactly what I did, but it, I could have. I may have also just had them in water and freshly tossed around in the water and then put them in the bowl so they look like that. But it's, I will spray with water. Uh, there's a photo of some golden raspberries and those I did um, and I actually wrote a little blog post about it how like without sprit spritzing with water and then with spritzing with water. It's a really subtle difference but it just adds that little hint of freshness. Little things like that. And I, yeah, that one right there. You can even see the water, you know, it got a little wet on the on the bottom part yeah. of the, the wood plank. So. Yeah, I think the water really makes them look fresher. Mm -hmm. they, they, right, it's like appetizing, you know. We'll yeah. still eat them without water on them, but that's how, if we're going to eat them, we're going to wash them first. So, right. you know, we kind of don't even connect those necessarily in our head. So one thing we haven't talked about, I want to go back to the blueberries, is uh, what you put all this into. You know, talked about cedar plank, uh, but, you know, sometimes you put it in a bowl. And, you know, how do you choose a thing that it goes into? And then the surrounding area, because... To me, I'm looking at this, and I'm, I'm a guy. I'm not that, you know, creative and, and, and colorful. But I look at this, and once I see it, I go, wow, that's really good. Because you got the blueberry, you got the white bowl, you got the white napkin and so on. And then the light blue thing and all that's on, and it seems to mm -hmm. all come together. So how much thought goes into the dish and the surroundings? Uh, that would depend on the that would probably just depend on which shoot I'm doing like some because sometimes I my, like a photo will evolve around one particular item in the in the frame like if I have a brand new dish that I really want to photograph and then I'll be like well what can I photograph with it you know and then I'll just kind of slowly build the scene with what I think looks really really good uh, this was kind of a, a I, I don't think I intended to photograph this. I was actually photographing uh, oatmeal, which is also, I think, in the slideshow I saw. And I knew I wanted to photograph blueberries on the oatmeal. And I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the colors match. Instead of having contrasting colors, I'm going to blend everything together with this light blue. I think, it's just, I think that's actually just like a really small um, like table, or what do you call it, placemat that I used for that. So, you know, I was like, well, I'm going to do oatmeal with blueberries. I'll have a blue background. It'll be a very blue theme. And then I'll, you know, I pop that green on top. So, um, and then I was like, oh, I have this nice little bowl of blueberries. Let me shoot this too. And it just kind of worked. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really hard to say my process because sometimes it just happens. I'll try. So I'll think that something's going to work perfectly and I'll photograph it and I'll be like, that, is, that doesn't look good. And I have so much crap. <laughs> it's not crap, but I feel like a hoarder because I have like all these napkins and tons of dishes and thankfully I have a dedicated space for all of this, but I, I feel like I'm so packed I can't buy any more, which is a, you know, a tra tragedy because I want to go to the thrift store and buy more, but I try not to because I have so many things I haven't photographed yet, but I have some really cute dishes you know, that I'm like, okay, I'm going to build something around this dish or I have a placemat and I'm going to build something around that placemat and make it work. So you're buying a whole bunch of individual dishes that together they don't go together. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, have, when you have people, when you and Brian entertain, everybody's eating on a totally different looking dish. <laughs> no, I have, I have separate dishes for <laughs> normal eating, and I don't really use those. I, I mean, sometimes they kind of blend together. You know, like I'll, uh, we made some, something the other day, and I needed some little ramekins for it, so I just took them out of my, my food style and my food prop stuff and <laughs> used them there. <laughs> So now, now will, um, you, will you reuse dishes for uh, different shoots, or do you use a dish once and say, "All right, now that's my photo. I'm not really going to use that dish again." <laughs> uh, that's sometimes I don't use it again, especially depending. I mean, I might use it like in a different, completely different setting, uh, or maybe in a background of something. I would, but I wouldn't want to get rid of it. <laughs> I would want to keep it because you never know. Uh, but you know, some things like really simple white dishes I'll reuse because with the stock stuff that I do, I don't want everything to be too, um, I don't want everything to be too crazy. You know, I don't go too, I like to go right, colorful. You want, it, you want it about the food, not about the dish. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes I do want it, I guess generic's not the word I want, but you know, like something along those lines. Um, but I, I don't know. I'd almost want to look through my photos and see which things I, like simple white plates are probably ones that I re reuse over and over because they're just plates. Uh, when it gets into more intricate things like fancy little bowls and stuff, then I'm less likely to reuse it, especially if it's for a similar 
uh, image. But but then again, it's I, I'm not photo, I'm not photographing for a cookbook, you know, which I uh, kind of touched on briefly earlier. How I want to do that, and when you photograph for cookbooks, you need to make sure that you're you're not. I would want to have every photo to be completely unique, so I wouldn't be reusing things. Right. I would want every you know every dish to be different and every placemat and fork and knife and whatever. So that's a, that's a, one of those occasions where you do want to be careful of it. But with what I do, it doesn't matter. I just want my portfolio to look really diverse, and so I tend and I I, I like using new things. <laughs> it's fun. There's a question: Do you use any clear dishes? Um, I have a few things that I've I've tried. Uh, I've you know some. I I don't really like using clear dishes, uh, especially plates. I don't like using clear plates. I think I've tried it before and it just it didn't work. Um, but for glasses, yes, I do. I have a lot of the back. Oh, this is you know the thing up right now is obviously clear. Um, it's it's you know a little bit more challenging to like get the light right on stuff like that. Uh, if you look in the background of a lot of my dinner type foods, I have usually a clear glass with fake ice in it. Which is in this scene, this shot as well. It's just this fake is, ice. This is fake ice. It's fake ice. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you how do you, how long it, you were able to keep this for it started melting. <laughs> no, I just I use fake ice. I have no problems with using fake ice because <laughs> that would just melt right through. Yeah, I took I, it out before. I have another. I have a series of these where I actually blended the fruit, and I took that ice out before I did that. <laughs> and I would like to mention, you know, what we're showing here is a reduced quality. You know, go out to. We'll put links. So Nicole's work, go out there and see the, the real quality of this stuff. Uh, when I was getting it, I was seeing the real quality. I was like, oh, my gosh. I had to eat dinner every night before I came down and, and look through your photos <laughs> because I didn't want to eat them on a, watch them on an empty stomach. <laughs> so, you know, make sure you do that. Um, somebody asked, do you, do you take photos of maybe the entire table? Or, you know, uh, you're looking at your photos, it's usually of a dish. Mm -hmm. So how are you, you know, deciding how much to include in the frame and how, how little, how much and how little to include in the I frame? Have, I use a very, very small footprint um, of space on my table when I actually shoot. If you look at, can you find one of the behind the scenes shots in there? Because yeah. that'll show a real good example of the average space. And a lot of that is just falls in with my style because I use really long lenses, either 100 or 200. Yeah, that's a perfect example right there. I don't usually get much bigger than that. Um, I don't. It's like I have a 200 mil, or it's a 70 to 200, but I'm probably zoomed in to 200 on that shot. I also my new favorite lens now is 100 macro, and it's I don't necessarily use it for the macro, but I use it. It's a great lens. It's really sharp. But I also am a, on a full frame camera, and when I switch from the 7D to the 5D Mark II, which I'm now on the Mark III, uh, I I really liked using my 200, but I needed to get closer to my shot. Because you know, I I went from being cropped in to having much more of my scene. My style is much more zoomed in and compressed, so that's yeah. why I am set up that way. And I I really enjoy the challenge of the comp composition when I do that because what you see there it looks so different in the actual photograph. You know, things like you move something like this far and it moves like this far in the in the shot. So it's fun to play with it. <laughs> and you want to so see a little bit of, of a texture. What kind of depth of field do you have then? Yeah. Are you going for a, a higher depth of field if you're zooming in that much? Yeah, I don't want to go too shallow because I I want the background to be blurred, but I don't want all of my food to I don't want only like a tiny little, you know, inch of my food to be in focus. I want most of my food if possible. And this I've developed this over a year, you know, the several years that I've been doing this. So I probably started out much more shallow and now I'm much more like let's so a good example is I'll probably photograph a, at one hundred um I'll at one hundred millimeters I'm more likely to be at F five six eight maybe even F11 depending on what I have in the background uh, because and depending on the food because I, I don't want all of the food to fall out of focus I want a lot of it to be in focus and then have it fall out in the background to you know blur so. yeah. okay I think here's another one of uh, you showing some kind of some of the light let me get rid of uh, this so it looks like the same setup you're just seeing the window light coming in Mm -hmm. And I guess you're using a reflector. Yeah, I have a. I just before I actually photographed it, I was probably just pushing play on the back of my camera to show the scene. Um, but when I was actually taking a picture, I was holding up a reflector right in front of it, uh, just out of, of course, out of the way. Uh, but on the background, it looks like you have the black board so that mm -hmm. you don't have light coming directly at it. Yeah, that's I. I do that if with this image, it's very possible that the. So I also have okay. I'll start from the beginning. 
So I have window light, and then I also have that triangle. It's a um, it's a diffuser, and it's not really being used in this shot. It just happens to be there because I started with it. And that's like I think it's a one stop diffuser, so it's going to soften the light a little bit, and that will prevent the background of my image from being extremely bright compared to the front of my, the foreground of my image. So by cutting out the light in the back, I'm able to kind of balance the light from, from front to back and not have there be a huge contrast. I don't want to clip my uh, whites. I don't want them to be pure white. And I also don't want, if I have any kind of, let's say I had like a thing of soy sauce in that scene for some reason, you know, and if uh, soy sauce is black, but if there's too much reflection, it's going to be just this white reflection. It's just going to look like white on the top because there's just too much glare. So by placing a piece of black foam board, it doesn't have to be black, it could be white, uh, just something solid, I probably, you know, that just gave it a little bit more shadow um, or uh, whatever. Uh, white would work just as well. Um, I'm forcing the light to wrap around it and instead of coming directly behind it and then I'm cutting out a lot of those reflections in any type of glass or liquids and I'm also, like I said, balancing that light in the background so it's not as different from the foreground. So I hope that that made sense. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. So now uh, I'm looking through my notes here. Uh, what about white balance? Do you do anything? Do you go auto or do you <laughs> auto, set up? I just go auto white balance. I shoot raw, so uh, I don't worry about it. And it's usually pretty, you know, camera's getting so good these days. And when I'm set up like this with uh, with daylight, um, it's it doesn't have a problem finding it. And I'll tweak it in Lightroom if I, if I need to. But it's, it's usually pretty good about being correct and out of camera. And you mentioned Lightroom. We are giving away some Lightroom presets tonight, right? Yes, we are. So uh, this is your warning. If you're not logged in the chat, you need to be logged in the chat because we'll be picking you out of uh, chat later on. And you also, we're also giving away uh, on one on one software, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, perfect perfect suite. So you need to be logged in for that. And in a little while, we're going to give you the secret code that you need to enter uh, to enter the Drobo giveaway. J. Baker Raw and the Home Tech Show, the Average Guy podcast, is giving away a Drobo. So you'll need to be logged in the chat for that. Yeah, Jim C. is out there. And, uh, yes, the Tim, Drobo. Tim, maybe I'll let you announce what the secret code is. You don't know what the secret code is, though, do you? Myself or Jim, did you say? Tim, uh, Tim. I meant to say Tim. Oh, I don't know it, so... <laughs> That's all right. I haven't thought it up yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my next question is, uh, talking about props, let me go find a photo I was thinking about. Is what kind of, or no, I'm, let's go, let's go ahead with props. Is you got the dish, but you often have things behind the dish. Mm -hmm. Going back to your blueberry, uh, oatmeal blueberry. You got the blueberries back there. You got the dishes back behind it. Uh, and I think you mentioned a little bit about that. You know, you have the plates that so you have all this, uh, all, all the stuff you buy from the thrift, thrift store. <laughs> Are you also amassing, uh, you know, props to go in the background that you mm -hmm. don't, that you don't intend to, you may not use them in a regular course of a day, but they're just meant for props. Yes, no, I do, and cups are a really big thing from that. Um, this is actually this blueberry. I'm sorry, this oatmeal photograph is probably the perfect example when talking about props and what I put in my background because this has almost every element I can think of <laughs> in, in putting things in the background. I have uh, I have a glass on, you know, like I have two things in the corners. I like to kind of keep my corners, either they're empty or there's something like right there, you know, kind of balanced in the corner. Uh, the spoon is not really touching anything. It's just kind of perfectly sitting in there, you know, without really touching the cup or the bowl. I have a, a napkin back there. I have a little bowl with the berries that are kind of sprinkled on the ground. Um, but yeah, I do. I find things. Usually, if something catches my eye, I know it when I I, I know it when I see it. You know, it's I can't go into a, a thrift store, let's say, or like a little antique store, and say I'm looking for dishes because they'll take me to all the wrong things. I will just find these little tiny. Usually, I, I work with things that are really really small. Like that bowl for the uh, oatmeal is probably only. Um, like this big. It's a really small bowl, but with my compression with my lenses, I it just makes things look a little bit larger. It looks like um, a large bowl. It does. Yeah, but I mean, if you really think about how lar how small blueberries are, uh, then it makes. I, I have another photo. I, I don't know if it's in this uh, in this set, but 
the, I have, I'm using a bowl that's probably like this big. It's not. It's, it's not in this. It's not this one. And it's yogurt, and then I have blueberries, and the blueberries look massive. And I even look at it and go and, and think the bowl is bigger than it was. But then when I see it in my my props, I'm like, wow, that's a small little bowl. <laughs> I don't think it looks so big. So, but, you know, the blueberries are ginormous in that photo, so it's it's really not that difficult to figure out. <laughs> Do you ever think that they become a distraction? Some of the props that you have. Uh, sometimes um, I've removed things from, you know, like I'll think that I want to put a fork in the background and then I'll realize, nope, I don't want it there, I don't need it there. But then again, because I do photograph a lot of things for stock, I will photograph different variations and upload those different variations. Ho you know, hopefully, the, sometimes stock places will be like, oh, they're too similar, but you know, here's me trying to like give options to the client. <laughs> like, this one doesn't have anything in the background and this one has a napkin and a, and a bowl or whatever. Uh, so I, I do try to, to take as many different variations as I can. Right, because so. sometimes you know what somebody's looking for. They may be looking for that shot with the spoon in the background or not with it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah, and that's, that's kind of the thing about stock. You know, I, I, Maybe somebody has never bought that because it had those things in the background and I, I didn't know they wanted an empty background with just the oatmeal in the foreground. So, One, one of my favorite, uh, and thanks for taking over there for a minute, Tim. <laughs> Every once in a while, I got to bail out. But um, one of my favorite shots, color-wise, is, and I guess because I'm, my favorite color is blue, is <laughs> this shot here. I love the depth of field in this shot. I love the blue, the contrasting colors in this shot. Mm -hmm. um, what what I'm dish is that? To rem I'm, uh, that's macaroni and cheese. That's macaroni and cheese. Wow. That's not like any macaroni and cheese I eat. That looks <laughs> That looks awesome. That's, yes. you know, and I'm actually trying to, th I think that the background, I think that that, uh, what I used for that, I don't know if it was blue, I think it may have been black, but just with the light and everything, um, it just, it were, it ended up that way, it, but it didn't, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember, I think it was, I don't think it was blue, but yeah, you're right, it, it turned blue and the color of the mac and cheese is still the proper color, so I kept everything how it was when I was editing, I was like, I kind of like it that way. It looks gorgeous. So I have I have a tip for you and Brian. Y'all okay. need to y'all need to open up a bed and breakfast. Oh God, no! <laughs> and, and and we can all come and stay there, and you can cook uh you can cook for us. Oh. Wow. Uh, so question. Yeah, out. I would eat just about everything you had. I know. Uh, question out in chat is is the f food edible after you shot it? And I think earlier you were saying that some of them are your meals mm -hmm. before you eat them. Yeah, well, this is actually, I ate this after I photographed it, so it, it's one of those things that is, you know, it, it probably came right out of the oven, and I sat it down and took pictures of it. Uh, this so, looks so yes. good, I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> That's completely edible. I mean, I, I planned this one. I knew, you know, I knew the pro what the process was going to be like. Um, the oatmeal photo that we saw, it was completely cold, and actually, like, the way that I actually photographed it, here's a, here's a little tip. Um, if I were to just put the oatmeal in the bowl, it would be flat. You know, I could try to really pile it up, um, but instead of like filling the whole bowl with oatmeal, I put a small, a smaller bowl upside down, and then I filled the oatmeal on top of that to make it easier to kind of arch up on the top, and um, and then like just like yeah, that's a perfect example. Oh, just because like what's here. Yeah, it works really well with doing any kind of pasta, noodles, uh, anything like that. Um, but what was funny was with, when I was finished with that oatmeal photo, it was you know I wasn't gonna eat that oatmeal; I'd been sitting out for. For way too long. Um, when I tried to take it off, it was like this Jello mold of oatmeal, inverted Jello mold or something. Because <laughs> I, I like like suctioned out of the bowl, and it was just like all congealed and stuff. So it was that was kind of funny. <laughs> this I didn't eat. This is another example. I didn't really eat that. Um, that was purely for a photograph. I, I know I had leftovers, and I ate the leftovers, but not the actual photo. So you you know if you don't want to open a bed and breakfast, what about writing a cookbook? I don't, I'm just, I'm not a recipe creator. I I watched so many food shows and I wish I were as like I can come up with things to photograph, but you know I watch like Top Chef and they'll be like, all right, you have to use an avocado and a banana, cook something amazing, you know. And it's like <laughs> they come up with these things in ten minutes, and I'm like, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be the person like making baby food or something, you know, that was right on a cracker because I I wouldn't know what to do. Um, I can follow recipes really well. I, I, I think I'm pretty good in the kitchen. I'm so these are, these are more or less recipes that you follow that you ph photograph then? They're either recipes or they're just concepts of things to make them look appetizing. Uh, like this, you know, there wasn't really 
there may not have even been any flavor in that. I can't remember how I cooked it. But I knew that if I, I put some some noodles with some vegetables and um, that really beautiful shrimp that I actually found at the um, Pike Place Market, then it would be a beautiful photo. And so I I photographed it. and <laughs> But, you know, a lot of the things, I like I said, I just come up with because I, I know they'll look beautiful. Um, and sacrifice a few of the pieces of food just to shoot them <laughs> and then eat the rest. Now, what about like drinks? Like, you, uh, and I, we have a photo up now of the, I guess the after with the bowl in it. So you can see, you know, the, the before shot and the after shot. But what about doing drinks? Do they add any special challenge? Yeah, it's always a challenge. Like, this is probably not the best example because I do have a lot of glare going on underneath. Like, you can see the um, reflection. Um, but I'm just overcritical. I think of my own photos. Uh, yeah, it is challenging to photograph any type of clear glass because, and actually this has been a blog post that I keep meaning to write because I know it'll be a, a I don't think I, I don't really think I talked about it in my book and I think it'd be a really valuable thing to put up out there. Um, whenever you photograph any type of glass, you're trying, you have to ward off so many different reflections. Uh, it, it also depends on the kind of light. Uh, actually, a really good example is that blender photo. Um, that was glass, and I used natural light with that. And um, I think I have, I may have the behind the scenes somewhere on my blog, but I, yeah. That's actually a white foam board behind it that I was able to just with the uh, the light, the way that I, you know, I had so much going on in this photo. I wish I, I wish I had the photo available to show you behind the scenes. but trying to make sure that there wasn't you know reflection in the front you can actually see the bottom part the metallic part uh, there's two white uh, foam boards I kind of make them you know bookends on the foam boards and so it was able to stand up and that's I had to move those in as close as possible while being able to fit my lens through um, so that way I didn't get any of my reflection onto it and that it looked balanced and um, didn't have any you know any, anything weird it wasn't like thankfully it wasn't a really shiny metal but it was you know it was enough to catch reflections and um, and then you know trying to get those reflections on um, so you don't get any weird things happening on the sides or in the front. So yeah, it's definitely a challenge. You're working with a lot more. And uh, for those of you who are really interested in photographing any kind of glass, there's a book out there called Light, Science, and Magic, and it has some of the most amazing um, behind-the-scenes examples or just like diagrams and examples on lighting setups and how to how to position things and light things so that way you're getting a really nice rim light around like a wine glass or a wine bottle or whatever. I don't really do a ton of that work. That's a very, that's a lot of product photography. Uh, so it's it's definitely not out of my comfort zone, but it's, um, I don't have a lot of examples of it. But um, that's a great book, just so you guys know. <laughs> no, very good. And, and, you know, you mentioned earlier about using oil. Um, do you use that mainly like in your pasta shots? Yeah, it just depends. It, if, the, if the food had oil to begin with or had, was cooked in some type of oil, then I'm more apt to actually help it along with some oil. Um, I don't like to add, I don't like to add things like, you know, if I, let's say if I were photographing strawberries, I would just put water on strawberries. I wouldn't do anything weird to them. Um, and that's just, I can, I have the luxury of doing that because of the style of food photography that I do. I don't, I, I technically, well, no, actually, even technically, I don't think I do commercial food because it'd be more editorial food photography um, in a way. F commercial food photography, there are a lot more uh, rules and, uh, you know, you've got people who do crazy food styling and positioning noodles certain ways. And while I am very apt to, you know, be um, uh, picky about those, I'm not, I'm not overly perfectionist about it, I guess. I don't know. The shot looks... Almost perfect to me. I don't see. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Actually, if you wanted, if if, if anyone wanted to re recreate a similar shot, that was linguine, and I, I, I think I curled the linguine noodles around my finger and just kind of put it down and let them fall out. <laughs> oh, so, there's right. actually a really good food styling book out there. Um, hold on, I, th I have a copy of it here. I have no affiliation with it. I just, it's a really good book. Uh, it's just called Food Styling for Photographers, and. So anyone oh, who's interested in food styling, it's a good book. They have two different editions, and I have both of them. I, this is the one that I know better than the others. Okay. Tim, did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> food styling for – I'm there go. actually looking it up. <laughs> now, somebody had asked earlier, and, you know, if you ask a question out in chat and I missed your question, you know, you might have to ask them more than once. 
Um, but we'll try and get to all of them. Um, in a shot like this where you're taking a hamburger, you know you have to deal with the meat, and the meat's only going to last so long. But what about the buns, keeping bread looking mm -hmm. fresh? Well, uh, let's see, for this one, I, when I'm doing any type of stacking, you know, like a sandwich or like, you know, the hamburger, I'm usually going to be placing some type of spacer in between each of the element, elements. So I don't re know exactly how I had this one set up, um, but I'm either, oh, I'm either going to use spacers or toothpicks. So all of the pieces of food aren't necessarily touching each other. What so, type of spacer? Like, what, what do you mean by spacer? So, so let's say, let's say I'm doing a sandwich. I'll just kind of use that as an example. So I'll have a sandwich. Um, I'll have then, and then the first layer would be a piece of cardboard, and then on top of that cardboard, I'd take, I'd, I'd take toothpicks and I'd break them in half, and I would poke the toothpicks on the cardboard, and then I'd start layering other things on it, and then you know, depending on what, what I want the food to look like, uh, I'll just kind of have these little spacers. Otherwise, you know, when you make a sandwich, it's usually it's going to be like this thin. Mm -hmm. But when you see them on TV, they're like plump and all the meat's all curly and beautiful and, uh, you know, everything's... The fresh. lettuce just hanging out perfectly. Yeah, exactly. So so they're using certain... For very likely, they're going to be using like, like spacers and it can be whatever. Um, it could be just food that's just kind of bunched up underneath there uh, to just, you know, give it more height. But my favorite is probably the, the toothpick thing is by just placing toothpicks because then you're not necessarily getting a flat piece of cardboard. It's going to allow things to kind of move a little bit or fall a little bit more into place. Wow. There's a lot that goes into <laughs> building a sandwich like that. So hopefully that answered the question on how you keep the bread fresh. It's not actually touching anything. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You wouldn't know that looking at the sandwich. It looks like you just want to pick it up and eat it. Yeah. Um, I noticed, you know, uh, the angle also. So, you, you know, the angle we saw you taking the, the one shot was mm -hmm. more, um, you know, looking down, not straight down, but an angle. Um, this one looks like it's a little bit more head on, but you know, at an angle. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you just taking all kind of different angles and seeing which one you like best? Or have you come to know, you know, at a burger, I want to do it. From, you definitely wouldn't want to do a burger from mm -hmm. over top. Mm -mm. Yeah, the the angle that you're choosing, you know, in terms of what, where you're positioning yourself to the food is going to depend on the food. And most of the stuff that I photograph is going to be more like this, where I'm not, I'm, I'm like at a 45 degree angle to the table, or I'm at level. I'm usually not at exactly at level with the table because otherwise I'm going to have stuff in my background I don't want. Um, so I'm usually like at a 45 degree angle. And this is a, this is a tall photo, you know, like the food is taller. And you, like you said, you wouldn't want to photograph it from above because, you know, you're not really going to see anything. Now, if I were showing all the pieces of the food, you know, like let's say, oh, I'm about ready to put my my hamburger together. Like sometimes they'll give you just a hamburger and then you have all your things to put on top of it. Maybe that would be, you know, more in a, a top-down photo. Uh, but, you know, other photos or other food that would be good photographing above from above are things like pizza, uh, anything that's really flat or graphical, uh, I really like circles in my images. So yeah, there's a good example right there is the um, uh, the peanut butter jelly thing. So I tried to get a good mix of photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't do a lot of that kind of uh, shooting, and that's just my style, I think. But well, I think you you know obviously you know this, but I think you know anybody doing this, you gotta think about sometimes overhead is the right shot sometimes mm -hmm. you know probably most of the time it's not but sometimes it is mm -hmm. well there are some photo food photographers I follow a lot of food blogs and there are some food photographers who almost 100% photograph from top down um, how would you do a burger well she doesn't do burgers so. oh yeah I guess it depends <laughs> on what you're photographing it would yeah be, yeah well, you know, I can't believe we're running up so close on the time. So let's go ahead and wow. do a let's go ahead and do a couple of things. I'm gonna go ahead and give you everybody out in chat. Here's the code word that you want to enter in. Let me pull up the the site. And if you're listening to this afterwards, you go. What you need to do is just go to um, um, JPEG to Raw. Let me pull up a web page. Just go to JPEG to Raw, and then go to the link that says giveaway. Right there on the on the page, jpeterraw.com. Then go to giveaway. Don't do it now while you're watching us. Um, when you do that, you'll come to the Drobo giveaway, and at the bottom of the Drobo giveaway, there is 
the entry form. And you can enter the in the entry form. You can do one of two things. You can um, message out what we did in Facebook, either through Twitter, Google Plus, or Facebook, or you can and or you can do this both of these. You can uh, enter the secret code that we're going to announce tonight, next week, and then Jim Collison, who does the Average Guy podcast, will do it this Thursday, next Thursday. The code for tonight is Nicolzi. That way, know you, that way we know you listen to tonight's show, Nicolzi. All right, so that's one thing. Um, you guys be sure to enter out there. Nicolzi just entered her name in chat too. If you don't know how to, yep. to spell it, <laughs> there it is. Perfect timing to answer a question. Yep. <laughs> um, so how about uh, the next thing? Is what do you want to do first, Nicole? The the let's see if I go to store. Yeah, click on store. I just launched my brand new Nicolzi store today. I saw that in Google Plus. Yes, congratulations. Thanks. And you are giving away which which one which one are you doing tonight? Um, I'm gonna give away that. Well, I really only have um, eight Lightroom presets and one Photoshop action so far because it's it's so new. So I'll give away. I'll give I'll give everything away. <laughs> so it's gonna be that pack plus the uh, Photoshop action. So um, it's for Lightroom four and Photoshop. Every version CS, uh, from CS3 through uh, CS6 awesome. for the Photoshop actions. So, all right. So yeah. we gave you a warning earlier to log in the chat, and actually, a few people left. I don't know what's up with that. Mm -hmm. um, so pick a number between one and twenty-five. Nicole, Who, me? Yeah, I'm sorry, Nicole. Nicole, pick a number between one and twenty-five. Am I keeping it? I'm keeping it in my head, or am I actually no, saying you it? Go ahead and say it to us, and we'll we'll count it out. Okay. One in twenty-six. Um, what's that? One in twenty-six. One in twenty-six. Mm, lucky number thirteen. Huh. Do you know who it is? I think I do. I don't know who the person. Is. I know that I see the name. But I don't know who it is. Oh, oh no! You know what? I had one extra name. I was one off from it. <laughs> Jill V. Jovi, you're out there. Well, <laughs> there's a slight delay between when we say something and it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if Jovi is out there. Jovi. <laughs> no, we did not say Jim C, and that's who I almost thought it was. Ooh, I am. Jovi's out there. Okay. Congratulations, Jovi. You won um, Nicole's Lightroom presets in Photoshop Actions. Mm-hmm. I'll uh, get a. I'll put a code together and I'll um I'll email it to you, Mike. And then is that okay? Is that okay? That's fine. Yeah. Okay. And Joe V, please email me at podcast at jpegdraw dot com, and then I will make the connection. For those of you who um still would like them, I do have a twenty percent off going on right now. Uh, if you use the code Happy Twenty, <laughs> I'll put it in the chat. Too, so. Happy Twenty. Awesome. How long does that go on for? Uh, through the end of the month. So. Uh, 10 days, almost 10 days. Because we can put it on our Facebook page, too, that you have yeah, a 20% 20, 20 off um, to the end of the month. Excellent. All right, Jill V, just, mem just please remember to email me, and we'll get you hooked up. All right, the next thing we're going to do, and then we'll – I, I don't know how tight you are on time, but uh, what I'd like to do is after we do the next giveaway – is come back and answer a few listener questions. How about that? Yeah, sure. If we missed anything. All right, the next thing we we're going to do is, uh, I did not, I actually did not know until we started to book you that you recently got married. I did. I got yeah. married in October. Well, congratulations. Thanks. And, uh, I mean, th th you guys are a powerhouse family now because Bri <laughs> Brian is also, Brian, your husband, is also a fantastic photographer. Yes. Um, and he also works at uh, On One Software. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've been to the show before, we actually gave away um, Perfect Suite On One Software. I think it was actually back then Perfect Suite 6, and we're up to Perfect Suite 7 now. Uh, we gave that away back when Scott Wyden was on. I think I said his name right. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but we're going to give away another copy of that tonight. I'm actually, and, and on top of that, I'm mm -hmm. going to throw in a signed copy of my new book. Awesome. It's about on one software. So <laughs> you get the, you'll get the suite, and then eventually you'll get the, the signed copy. Book. Now, is that one of those rogue signings? No, it'll be, a, I have a box of them back there. So <laughs> it'll be a real legitimate signing. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, and you know, I, I mentioned to you, we have a long list of photographers we'd like to have on a show, and your name was on it right from the beginning. Um, and, and not. Why'd you wait so long? <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it is odd in how we pick people. Uh, one thing during the beginning of the show, we were working out some bugs, uh, you know, getting, getting better every show. <laughs> and then, two, it's just how the timing of things work out. Um, and I, I don't want. I don't know if you and Brian are competitive, but don't read anything into the who we invite first either. Oh no, I don't. <laughs> Although I would, Tim would agree with this. The wife is always the better half. Yes. So, so we'll have to go with we invited the better half first. And I'm, <laughs> I and I'm, like that. And I'm sure Brian would not disagree with that at all. Yeah. <laughs> Not but, if he wants to stay a newlywed. That's right. <laughs> he's not just newlywed. I've been married for a long time, and it's, <laughs> it's a lesson you should never let, uh, lose. Um, okay, so how about we pick another number between 1 and 25 for the winner of the On One software? Sure. We'll go... Oh, there's, it's not 26? Um, 25? 25 now. I'll go 25. I'll go the last one there because it's really close to the day that we got married. Oh, <laughs> okay. Tim Foster. Tim Foster. That was easy to pick the last one. <laughs> you didn't have to count them, huh? Yep. Nope. <laughs> Tim, you have to be out there, though. Tim, you're out there. We'll wait for Tim to come around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay, me. Yay, nice. me. Hey, congrats. <laughs> congratulations, Tim. Congratulations, Joe V. Um,. And if you didn't win His tonight, wife is happy too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that? So I'll just need a. I'll, I'll need a guess, is Daniel that. Foster a Tim Foster's wife? Is oh wow! There you go. That's cool. Yeah, congratulations, guys. Um, so we'll have to work out. You know, email me, Tim. Email me at podcast at jpegdaraw dot com, and I will get in, back in touch with you on how to to get your copy and the book. Mm -hmm. And thank you, you know, Nicole and and for getting this stuff for us and for coming uh -huh. tonight. Um, guys out in chat, if there's anything that we missed, any questions that you want to ask her before we head out? And I can't believe my voice is held out this long. <laughs> questions. What questions do we miss? Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, that well, we'd have to give the answer first, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the other way around. Sugar rim, on, sugar rim on glasses. What's the question? Um, I can't get in <laughs> What is that? Since it, oh, that, oh, is she talking about the, um, the, uh, what was that? The Bloody Mary photo? Yeah, hold on, let me I go. I think that was, I think that was salt on the, on the rim that I used for that one. For this shot. But either way, was... like, I do, I, I, I do on occasion make a fancy drink for myself to just drink <laughs> and um, you can you know if you just use what I do and it doesn't really seem to dissolve too much so here's a here's a tip from my own experience I guess from just drinking um, take a like a lime wedge or whatever and just you know rim it around and then take a bowl and fill it with the sugar or whatever and kind of get it on the side and I wish I had it here I'll use my cup here and then just kind of take the take the bowl and just kind of move it around in that big pile of sugar. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It usually so you, sticks. See you know, that on like margaritas, sticks. that's how they do it at a bar. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Okay. Yeah, interesting. Where, so where do you get the fake ice? Oh, I see I'm I'm reading the chat right now. Uh, you can get fake ice on Amazon and you can get bags of it for like ten twenty dollars it's not very expensive and usually you get a pretty good size bag okay so. that'd be a good uh, party gag too yeah <laughs> that'd be a painful party gag <laughs> i like to crunch ice ow i like to crunch ice too um do you do tutorials or do you ever do workshops or anything like that i don't i don't do workshops um 
It's just I just haven't really, it's, it's a lot of logistics and I haven't really lived in one place long enough to set anything up. So I don't have anything set up now and I don't really know what I'm going to be doing in the future. I do have a, a food photography video class that I may be doing in a few months, but it probably won't be out to the end of the year, but I don't really want to talk too much about that yet because it's not set in stone. Um, but I have like, I don't have food photography tutorials, but I have uh, little Photoshop tips that I do on my blog. And, you know, I could probably give you a quick link to that. Um, I'll put that in the chat so you can, so you can see. And we'll, and we'll put it in the show notes. You know, a lot sure. of our, a lot of our listeners, of course, um, you know, listen to the show after the fact, listen to the recorded show. And if you couldn't make it for the whole show, you know, we do record this. We'll have it out on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, uh, BlackBerry, which I'm sure BlackBerry is going to be an exploding market. Um, <laughs> With the Zoom. With the Zoom uh, marketplace, yep. <laughs> All those different places. And, and, of course, YouTube, too. Um, so you can, you can get it later if you, if you didn't get it all tonight. And my voice doesn't always sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim C. out in chat says he loves the Zoom. Yeah, I'm sure we got one or two listeners out in Zoom. <laughs> So, and then uh, someone asked, uh, Photo Leslie asked, that I, if I sell all my work as stock photos. Um, a lot of my work is stock, but if you see me photographing landscapes or travel stuff, most of that is not going to be stock, especially if I consider it my, like, fine art photos. I kind of keep those in my own collection, I guess. So, but I'll, I'll, I put a lot of, uh, you know, my food, of course, and I'll do some editorial to go into stock, so... So getting a new store out is a big major accomplishment. You got that done here early in 2013. What, yeah. do, what do you have planned? Any big plans for the rest of 2013? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, actually, I do have an idea. I'm really – so I ha I've been selling Lightroom presets. Actually, four of the presets that I have in my store were originally on my blog for sale for, since October, and I just decided it's time for me to kind of put a different presence out there and actually have a legitimate – you know, store that looks like a store. Uh, my plan is to self-publish ebooks and photography ebooks and put them in there as well and make them available a few other places. But uh, that's going to be a big project of mine. Um, I actually, you know, it's like I, I can really only see a few months out into the future and I can't see past May. So hopefully I can fill that whole time with writing <laughs> and, and photographing, and do all, all the other little things that I do, but big, you know, endeavors are going to be writing. Well, you, you know, uh, one thing that we've been talking about wanting to do is doing, uh, like when Scott Kelby does this thing, getting a JPEG to Raw group and going out and doing, uh, doing photo walks. You do a, quite a bit of photo walks and that kind of thing, too. Um, yeah, I do. I've done a lot of photo walks. Uh, I haven't done any in recently. Not like, not a ton. We've been really busy. Uh, we traveled to Cambodia uh, in November. We uh, moved into a new home and, you know, just kind of catching up on things uh, since the beginning of the year. Um, I'm actually going to be in Australia uh, for uh, starting next week for like three weeks. <laughs> so we'll be doing wow. a photo walk there. <laughs> Anyone listening from Australia, we're planning a photo walk, I believe, on March 8 in Melbourne. So uh, more details will be on my Google Plus page as well. Yeah, and, and you <laughs> are you are big in, in go, on Google Plus. If you ever, I got your Google Plus page pulled up here. Uh, just go to Google Plus and search for Nicole Young, and she has a lot of her photos listed there. And you can follow Nicole over there. Um, being down in Australia, you're just well, I don't know how little it is, but not that far, closer than you are now from where Trey Radcliffe lives over there. Yeah, I won't be making it over um, to see him because it's still. It's still quite a jump over there, and we have a completely packed itinerary, so <laughs> we, don't, we don't really have much room to, to squeeze anything else in, and uh, Brian is much more limited on the amount of time he can take off from work, you know, unlike myself, which I work mm -hmm. from home, so I'm my own boss, and I tell myself what to do, <laughs> so we had to, we had to, you know, two and a half weeks, three weeks, that's, that's, that's a pretty good time, <laughs> that's a long time to be gone. So we really couldn't extend it. It would have been great, though. You know, it's it's so expensive to travel out there. Um, sure. So it's it, no. We'll be watching. We'll be watching your Google Plus page. I would love to visit. My four favorite places I'd love to visit is Alaska, Iceland, Australia, and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And so that I, I I look forward to seeing your photos from there. You and you know what? I guarantee you will see a lot of me posting. I hope it's not overwhelming. Uh, actually, this is a kind of a PR trip. So we are going to photograph and share uh, Australia 
with our followers on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, um, Instagram. So if you're following me, you'll see every day, you'll see what's going on. Uh, so, <laughs> you, you, know, that's, <laughs> you know, a lot of our, a lot of our fans are uh, more on Facebook, but if you haven't tried <laughs> out, if you haven't tried out Google+, you know, we're using Google+, Hangout right now to do this show. Now we are streaming at the Justin TV and live stream and doing that, but the Hangouts just work fantastic. And there's a ton of amazing photographers over there uh, on Google+. And it's a real, it's a real sharing community. Uh, what we yeah. have found, I don't know how much business, it may be better for business over on um, on Facebook, but there's a lot of interaction. You make a lot of good friends from uh, Google+. I met Brian through Google+, actually. Yeah, so, that's right. I think I read that. that yeah. you, you met Brian <laughs> through Google+. Actually, I think yeah. that's how I, you know, I don't have the same relationship with him as you, but that's how I, <laughs> that's how I found him is uh, through Google+. So yeah. I actually had found, I knew of you before I knew of him. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, other, uh, other than Nicolzi, was it NicolziBlog.com? Where else can people find you? On Google Plus? Oh, yeah, on social media. I mean, everything's linked, linked from my blog. Uh, if you go, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there are all the links that you really need to get in touch with me. So, um, yeah, but, you know, it really, if you just Google Nicolzi, you should be able to find me. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Nicole, we, we uh, appreciate you coming out. Um, and let me get this set up. <laughs> we appreciate you coming out and really appreciate you spending the time with us to discuss, you know, food photography, something we have not covered yet on the show. Uh, and it is much more difficult than I think people realize, <laughs> unless you've actually tried it. <clears throat> unless you've actually tried it, you don't realize how difficult it is and how much thought it has to go into making a good-looking photo that look uh, a food photo that looks edible to someone it is it is much more complicated than, than what you think and you know, go out to nicole's uh blog she or, or your store you have all your books there you can buy the books there too mm -hmm. and we will be buying one of the books the food photography book and giving away to our jpeg draw winner of the february contest all right um yeah. tim we know where to find you over at JPEG to Raw. JPEG to Raw. Yeah. On the Facebook. And that's where you Sometimes. can find me. Over on our Facebook page or our Facebook group. Or e if you ever, if you, if we didn't get to a question that you had and you want to ask Nicole, you can either go directly to her or you can send us an email at podcast at JPEG to Raw dot com and we'll get it to Nicole. And hopefully by next week, my voice is completely <laughs> better. Hopefully, hopefully. Yes. All right, everybody out in chat, we're going to let you go. We'll see you again next week. Thank you for Bye coming. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks good for night. coming.